Okay, so we were talking about the IgE. So when these IgE, the FC portion of the IgE occupies the receptor on the mast cell, that is a very dangerous combination. Why is that a dangerous combination? So come here, let's talk about that. So this is what happens. Check this out. So let's say this is a mast cell, right? This is the little chair for the IgE to come and sit on. So mast cell is a big machine on which sits the operator. It's a horse on which sits the rider. So the rider is the IgE immunoglobulin. So IgE, IgE. IgE is going to become more important for eosinophil as well and IgE is important here as well. So the receptor which is called FC, epsilon Ri, this receptor is primed by the IgE. When there are two such chairs occupied by the IgE, so let us say when two IgEs are sitting next to each other and allergen, allergen creates a cross link, so that is important. It is two witnesses needed inside the cell before the action will be taken place. So two consecutive IgEs or two nearby IgEs, the receptors, they have to become triggered by the IgEs together. So what happens is this, when the antigen comes and frankly I should say allergen, when the allergen comes and attaches to the antigen binding site on the Ig immunoglobulin. Again, I regret that we have not yet talked about immunoglobulin, so you have to make two for the time being. We will go ahead and talk about them in our next lectures, but go with me for the time being that the allergen will bind to this antigen binding site. When that allergen binds over there, that causes a conformational change in the FC portion of the IgE. It is a protein, right? So I hope that you are familiar with the idea of conformational change. The idea of the conformational change is that sometimes when the proteins get something attached to them or when they get a change in one part of them, then there is a, there is a conformational structural change which appears. Normally that is because of various um, positive and negative charges. So for example, if these things are two magnets, if I bring them close, they would have a different strength if I keep them away, they would have a different strength or force of attraction. That strength of attraction can then be used to create further changes inside the protein. So that is called conformational change in a nutshell. So the net, what would happen is that the conformational change which would appear here on the FC portion, that would cause a conformational change in the receptors. That in turn would cause, so, so it's a G, G protein related receptor, that would increase cyclic GMP. This is very important. So as a doctor, as a student, both, you have to know this. Why? Because you're going to be handling patients who have allergy. And you need to know what is happening inside the cell to be able to help them. So it's nothing to memorize, it is something to understand. And from a student's point of view, these are going to be very attractive USMLE questions. They're going to try to see if you know this thing. So now what's happening is, when the G protein, when these receptors, FC, E, R, I receptors, two of them which are sitting next to each other, when they both are triggered, then that would cause an increase in cyclic GMP. Increase in cyclic GMP, I hope you understand this is the second messenger system. Second messenger system, finally the result of that is going to be that the message is going to go inside the nucleus and then some proteins are going to come out or sometimes the effect is directly going to be on the vesicles present inside the cytoplasm. So what is the effect? The granule would go to the surface and fuse there. So when the granule would fuse with the cytoplasm, with the cell membrane, the substances present here these substances will be released out. 
and what are these substances? These are histamines, these are tryptases, these are hydrogen, uh, hydrox, uh, what are these? Hydroxylases, these are um, uh, peroxidases, right? And what is their action? Their action is going to be they are going to act. So if I have one vesicle open up here, what are they going to do? So the histamines are going to go and attach to the endothelial cells. And that would cause the contraction of the endothelial cell. Remember, we talked about it yesterday as well. Histamine and thrombine, they go and they attach with the endothelial cell. That causes the contraction of the endothelial cell, which would then cause the pores to appear or gaps to appear between the endothelial cell and the fluids would start leaking. That is one. The other is that these substances are going to go and act on the smooth muscles. So what is the action in the smooth muscles when they go in there? Calcium influx would occur and the smooth muscle would contract. So when this would happen to the respiratory muscles, bronchial muscles, that would cause bronchoconstriction, which would make the, the breathing difficult. And when this happens, when the vas vascular dilatation happens and when the increased permeability occurs, then what, what would happen? There would be a lot of fluid coming in, right? When that fluid comes in, so H2Os are going to come in, proteins are going to float in, and there is edema which is going to appear, right? This part of the tissue is going to start swell up, going to start swelling up. Now what would happen? If it is larynx, what do you think is going to happen to me? The larynx is going to swell up, that is going to choke the larynx and my breathing is going to become difficult. If it is skin, what is going to happen? Small vesicles are going to start appearing, which are filled with the fluids. Urticaria, hive, itching, right? If it, is, if it is the blood pressure we are talking about, what is going to happen? As the fluids are moving out of the blood vessels, the, the blood pressure is going to go down. So hypotension, urticarias, hives, eczema, and laryngeal difficulty in breathing, laryngeal edema, difficulty in speaking, all those things are going to appear due to this degranulation, right? And I hope that you know that how the vesicles go and they attach to the cell membrane and they degranulate. That all is done by the cyclic GMP. Now here is a funny thing, important thing, very important thing. If in the same cell you successfully increase cyclic AMP, cyclic AMP, then the degranulation stops. So the pathway for the calcium to come in and the vesicles to move towards the cell membrane and get attached there and degranulate, that is blocked. So that would have a membrane stabilizing effect, right? So please remember, so there is a balance, cyclic GMP on one end cyclic AMP on the other end. This is mast cell we are talking about and the basophil we are talking about. So if you increase the cyclic GMP in the mast cell, what is going to happen? It is going to degranulate more. When it is going to degranulate more, it is going to try to kill you. How? By vasodilatation, by increased vascular permeability and by smooth muscle contraction. On the other hand, if you can increase the cyclic AMP in this cell, on this side cyclic AMP, then what would happen? Calcium influx would reduce, the degranulation would reduce, cell membrane would become stable and the effect of degranulation would be taken away. That is why, now hear this out, very important. That is why you give medicines which increase the cyclic AMP in a person who is experiencing allergic reaction epinephrine, right? That would increase the cyclic AMP inside the cell, especially inside the mast cells, stabilize them and stop the degranulation. Now, these substances which have been released, these substances are going to do their function from 20 minutes to about 60 minutes. So the person is at, at a high risk of anaphylaxis for 20 to 60 minutes in which blood vascular permeability permeability is increased, laryngeal edema is occurring and bronchoconstriction is occurring. It could be mild as well. So remember if in uh, fall season you go around pollen or you go around the hay or, or that and you feel little irritation in the nose, 
or you get a little choke in the throat or runny nose, runny eyes, that all is local mild effect. So, it is not necessary that every time the mast cells will, will become active, they are going to take down the body. Sometimes it is localized annoying disturbance. Some people even do not have that. And then in some unfortunate cases, this can actually become much more stronger and can cause effect. So, I hope that you understand how IgE would prime the mast cell to cause the degranulation and the effect.